So, uh, this has had overnights dry, completely, and uh, we're not going to worry too much about the underside because we're not going to get to see that bit. Um, just looking at the instructions now and some of the reference material I have backstage, you know, on the, on the PC and stuff like that. Uh, what we're going to do is, still got to paint all the tyres the and stuff like that, still got to sort all them out, still trying to figure out how to do that. But, um, I've been trying to thought now. Yay, why not? As we can see, the wheels are green. Let's zoom you in a little bit. Whoop. Like so. Oh, I'm making fox noises now. What's that about? Oh, focus. Focus, dear. There we go. So the wheels are going to be green with the rubber tyre things. And where else is there? There we go. Let's try to find you on the screen then. We've got this uh, this deck here. So if I orientate to vehicle round, like so. So we've got the deck at the back where all the engine greebies are. Most of that is going to come down here and then it's going to be covered up. Oh, hang on, zoom out so you can actually see what I'm doing. The boxes that go here, that green will come most of the way down and then the cam and the boxes actually comes a little bit further up. So I've still got to figure out how to mask all that off yet, but this entire deck here will be going in the green like so and then this part here is actually that rear box that we've been working on separately which is where did you go so that'll go there like so and then you get the two back boxes so I'll just grab one for the time being so the camouflage pattern is actually on those there if you look at this properly Get that really tiny lip right at the back, which I can't quite get you zoomed in on. Or I couldn't a minute ago when I was having a quick practice. There we go. Nope, too far. Come back. Focus, focus. Yeah, I can't quite get you in on it. But that tiny little sliver there, in that corner, is actually this section here. So let's say we'll smother all that in the green to green. So having just given my airbrush another clean coat, just make sure we're blowing dry. I'm running out of space again for some reason. I don't know why. You stay there. And I've just spent a couple of minutes giving that a good old shake off camera. A rat old shake. So going off that as well, I can't quite see under the skirts. I'm going to assume that all of the here would have been green still as well to go with the wheels uh, so we'll do that and I'm going to assume on the underside of the skirts would have been green as well and I'm not actually going to have to find out if that was any different if the underside of the skirts were painted to match the camouflage yeah, so obviously if you lift up one of the panels like I'm assuming you do lift up one of the panels you're going to see a big spot of green now if the Soviets saw that, yeah, that could have been interesting. So, just off camera, drop a bottle of paint, why not? Good job there's a lid on that. 
just off camera, there's literally about seven spots of paint in there. Where did you go? There you are. And look, I just finished screwing the paint back, the lid back on the paint even. So seven spots of paint in the cup. And I'm going to give a quick spray just there like so. Make sure everything is running nicely and smoothly. And then spray gently. A couple of light coats again. I don't try and bash it all down in one go. Get those trucks and nannies at the back there. Around, so there's barely any pressure coming through. I guess there's lots of overspray, but that's okay. The real thing would have been painted entirely in green before this camouflage went on. It's like nice thin coats. Never mind. It's fine. If you notice I'm not waving the brush around all over the place. It is actually quite controlled. Honest, honest it is. So a little bit of overspray doesn't matter. Just get back into there, and I'm going to come. Right along the like so. A quick play with the light in, just make sure I've not missed anything. It looks okay. So that little bit of overspray underneath. Doesn't really matter. The boxes are going to hide that, but I'll incorporate the, incorporate that into the cam pattern. And I've literally just used that paint up. So it's getting a little bit smoky. So I'll do this one side with you, and then I'm going to put the um, the fan on. That's what I wasn't going to do. Is under here would have been still green as well. I'm going to camouflage the box, but not this part of the turret. Because yeah, it means taking the turret off completely to get underneath to paint that part. Yeah, you know, I'm assuming that box was just a bolt. No, not bolting. Bolt, bolt on. So let's test my floor again. That's okay. So just under there. That's it. The really hard to get place. Quite difficult to do with you sat there, so I'm just going to let you over there a little bit. That's better. Again, a little bit of overspray up the side, doesn't matter, you'll cover that with a cam pattern. Nice thing, coat. Not a problem. I'm going to do most of this on this side as well. Like I said, we'll just get into this part for the time being. Nice thing, Cole.
that's one side done. We'll do the other side in a second. Like I say, it's getting a little bit smoky in here now, so I'm just going to finish this part off here. That's green, that. I like that one. about use that up so I'm gonna put the mask on and get this fan on and then we'll carry on with this part So that's had about 20 minutes to dry. I'm not even going to try masking that up yet, but just noticed there's a couple of spots on the uh, the lower hull and underneath the turret as well. There's a couple of shiny spots like this. I have heard this of the the mig pack. Hello, stop moving, like. You stay there. Stay. There we go. I've heard this about a the mig ramo paints. They're actually a, a satiny finish kind of thing or something. I'm not going to worry about that. At this point, if you're not used to these kind of paints or used to spray painting and things like that, you'll see that kind of thing. You'll be like, oh my god, I've done something wrong. No, don't panic. Don't panic. I've got to um, gloss varnish all that first before I can do any decal work, which should even it all out. If it doesn't, it's not a problem. Not a problem at all. Uh, with the gradual layers of, let's say, gloss varnish or matte varnish once we've done the decals and things like that. Oh, hang on. Gloss varnish, decals, gloss varnish, wash, matte varnish, and any weathering. That should balance itself out. So I'm not going to worry about that at all. And neither should you. Yeah, there's more than one you know, way to finish these things. 
uh, I'm not too bothered at all. So I'm going to leave that completely to dry. Um, it's getting quite late, so I'm going to leave that overnight. Uh, yeah, leave that overnight. But I'm going to try something with wheels. But you won't get to see that just yet. You'll get that, to see that in the uh, the episode with the wheels. Because I've still got to do a little bit of painting there. As you can see, do a little bit of priming. Not a problem. Like I said, we'll cover that part in the uh, the wheels episode. Don't worry. I'm not doing it. I know I'm doing it. I, I do. Honest. No, I don't. Yeah, I do. Righty, okay. That's had the best part of an hour now to dry. As you can see, there's a nice big glossy part just there. If I play about the lighting, it's quite a big glossy part. It looks spotty as hell, but that's fine. That's fine. It'll even itself out. Hello. It'll even itself out as we go along with the glosses and things like that. So, just off to the side here, I don't know if you can make that out. Remember when we did the masking on the Ameha build? I'm just going to take some masking tape. I'm just going to do a quick test on this underside here. Just when I'm going to get to see that part. It's not very often you get to see that part of the tank anyway. If you do, it's gone boom. And it's flipped. Or like Mr. Wags. You know who you are, Brandon. Uh, you flip it. So hopefully you got to see that then. I'll try again with another piece of tape. I'll trim this off camera up in the air. Up in the air. That little bit of black there is off my, my gloves. Shift yours to the side. When we put this down, it stays quite a pale, um, quite pale. But then when you add pressure, you see it go dark, which means it's all tapped down, which is lovely. Yeah. That's when I'm building other things. Trim parts from a frame. Write it down in pencil. I think I've shown you that, haven't I? So if we take that off now, what that's done is it's taken quite a bit of the tack away from the tape. Hopefully I can get the lighting right. Hopefully you should see the tape will quite dark as it gets tacked on. Like so, and then you know that that tape is stuck down. So I'm just doing this as a quick test underneath here. So like I say, you won't get to see this part. Just to make sure that we're not going to lift any paint off when we actually unmask this. So we're getting ready now to do the white on here, which means I've got to mask the green off. It's getting quite exciting now. Getting quite excited. If I very gently peel that off, I say that's the, the black off my gloves. Don't worry about that. Well that's absolutely fine. Lovely. Right. Do some proper masking. So I'm going to take my glove off. You've been painting something else and that hand's all sweaty now. I'm sure you're waiting all that. So I'll just put that down on the table there. And trim to a, a length. And pop it down. You'll see other video tutorialist type people. Uh, stick that on the back of the hand or something like that but I find that you stick it on the mat it does the exact same thing it's all very lovely so I'm going to pop that very loosely right across there like so this back edge does actually stay green that's missed yeah so that's going to be fun I'm just taking some paint off that photo edge. Lovely. Right, so we're going to have to watch out for that. Hmm. That's a bit of a pain. Wunderbar. Right, so we're going to have to use some kind of paper over that bit. I'll touch that in afterwards. 
I'm not going to panic about that. That's all. What we'll do there is we'll just paint some uh, primer with brush over the top. Is this going to be too absorbent? Probably. Probably will be. So we'll use we'll use some kind of paper. That's fine. Right. So let me uh, let me have a think about this. I'll be back in a second. This is how I find out how sharp your knife is. So it's a little bit of cling film food wrap. Whatever it is called in your part of the world. Using a steel ruler and very sharp, hopefully. Just on the knife. That's how you find out how sharp your knife is. If that knife was blunt, that would have been dragging. And I'm going to take a very quick measurement. Okay, is that two inches? Cool. So if we go right about there, and that should be more than enough overlap for me to get some tape on. Boxies. I don't need no boxies. And then. So a big piece there, that's seven centimetres. So we've got slightly bigger again. Put it eight, which is roughly there. That should be plenty. That should be plenty. Right. Quick check. Lovely. Lovely. Right, let's get some tape on that. See, we don't have problems. We have temporary situations without permanent solutions. No such thing as a problem. And again, the temptation there is to go panicking like mad. Don't worry. There's always a way around it. There's always a way around. the same problem there. A little bit of chippy chair in there, that's fine. That's it, we can touch that in with brush afterwards. That's fine, so that's just going to take care of most of the deck there. overhang at the back. I can wax some tape underneath. So that's me. That's precise there. There's a tendency as well here to overthink the problem. Breathe. It's fine. It's okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. There's going to be quite a few of you yelling at your TV at the moment. Easy to trust me, guys. I'm very unconventional. I find that it does work. It's not to everybody's taste to appreciate. But I learnt quite a long time ago. With caution to the wind. He's open over that part. So let's trim there. So I'll just get that to sit down a bit. Like so. So I can get that to sit down. Take a sliver from here. Like so. A decent sized sliver. How many shot? Ooh, just about. Just cover that gap. It's quite hard to tell where everything is because that basket's in the way. On diagram. Don't worry, I'm scratching my head as well. And hopefully that's going to fit there. Ooh, that was a good fit. <laughs> Got away with that one. He's fine. He's fine. There we go. Right. That's that. Should have been, probably been a little bit thicker. Yeah, 
звука. Even though I've got really thin tummy tape off to the side, if I can get it from the wide stuff, I will do. the thin stuff now. Which hopefully should cover that gap. to me nose. Just got to trim it back there. Now what I'm going to have to do is try and find photos online now to see how far this comes because I'm not too sure if this little corner here will be green or whether that's going to go in the camouflage colours. So I'm going to have to do a quick check on that. For now, I'm happy enough with where it is because once we've got the boxes on, you're not really going to see that anyway. Let's get a little bit more forward. There we go. That's your position, isn't it? Just there. So if you bear in mind, let's see if we can get these baskets on. So we've got that basket there. We've got this light box here somewhere. Roughly there. There you go. Got another basket just here. A couple of other bits and bobs hanging off the side. So you're not really going to see too much of this corner. And of course, if you've got the time to do that, go for it. There's absolutely nothing stopping you. But for me, yeah, time is of the essence. Unfortunately, I don't quite have the time to go and do the research that I need to do. Right now, at least anyway. So, what I could do is... I'll tell you what. I can always retouch. It's fine. Let's just get that white on. Let's get the white on. So, it's going to get a bit noisy again now. Stay with you for a little bit of the white. I've got to find the white. There's the white. There's the white. I'll stay with you for a little bit of it. And then I'll do the rest with pretty music and a face mask on. That's how my horse is all at the moment. We're about to do the same again now. <laughs> so, let's get this steel ball going. Oh, 
It's a good workout. squirt in the bottom. Not gallons and gallons and gallons of the stuff. You stay in control of it. You're in charge. Right. Let's have a laugh at this then. It's the same again. Nice thin coats. Don't try and smack it all down in one go. Smells like clay, this stuff. I know it looks a bit snotty on. Uh, oh, my white seems to be fading out. Looks a bit snotty, but the third coat will sort it out. It's fine. Inside to dry a little bit. I say it does look a bit snotty, but a third coat we're leaving it all out. It's not a problem. Chuck some white in there. Now then. Let's get this on. So I'm going to come across the mask in this time. Which hopefully should eliminate any bleed through.
all spitty again. And I think I might need to do a deep clean. This is because I'm trying to paint three different projects at the same time. It's not advisable. Actually not bad white. I do like that. I'll just give that a quick wipe. Yeah, I'm trying to paint three things at the same time at the moment. I've got this on the go and two for my own channel. I'm not quite cleaning out properly in between. It's not great. Oops, got my fingers. Alright, let's do a final coat on here. Lovely.
not so sure if you can make that out with open camera. Just here. I've got some paint build up again because I've been doing mostly uh, quick uh, get worse Tony. Quick colour changes right there. Some paint build up which are causing all the spittage. You probably hear it. Just there. So there's a good chance there's a little bit of paint build up inside that tiny tiny little nozzle too. Which means I'm gonna to have to do another bath kind of thing. Because that's how I've been uh, working on three projects today all at the same time. So it's literally zoom back out again. Do a bit for this, do a bit for another project, do a bit for another project. So yeah, that's not ideal. So if you do get any spittage like that, then it's usually a little bit of build up on your needle and inside your nozzle. So do take the time every now and then, just especially if you're working like that through the day. Yeah, take a bit of time. You strip it down. Give it a proper clean now and then. So, as you can see, if you are going to be doing a lot of spray painting like I've been doing in that episode, uh, I was actually working on three things throughout the day. I actually managed to get a full day here, which is very, very rare, so I had like a million things to catch up with. But if you are spraying for prolonged periods of time, take the time to set yourself a regular space uh, if you can and do a full field strip and get a proper clean on. Otherwise, when you come to spray your next project, You'll end up with a lot of paint build up in here, as you've just seen at the end of that clip. And you'll cause yourself all kinds of problems, all spitty and spatty and stuff like that. So do take your time to clean it up. Right, I've lost my little thing. It goes here, but I shall see you next time and we'll begin all the masking. All of it. All of it. It's brilliant. You'll like this bit. Um, join us next time, we'll get all that sorted out. In the meantime, thank you all so, so much for taking part in this and following and doing the thing and the stuff and the what's in the do that. Pop along, see my mix at emodels.co.uk. Don't forget the live stream on a Monday night with Fex, Fex and Tad. Fex and Todd. Fex and Todd. My brain hurts. Can I go home now?